Hello everyone, welcome to the XHCI Driver Development Series. You are probably here because either you've been dabbling in kernel development for a bit now and got to a pretty good point where you now want to support USB device connections, or you're simply interested in how the XHCI controller works under the hood, or just want to learn more about the USB protocol. Either way, you've come to the right place, as I want to make the series an entry point into understanding the XHCI protocol and how the controller operates, as well as provide step-by-step -step guidance into how to build your very own XHCI driver for your operating system. In this series, we're going to go over how to set up and start the XHCI controller, how to manage USB ports, and how to communicate with connected USB devices. If you're already using your own existing kernel as a basis, make sure it has the following features implemented. You should be able to enumerate and detect PCI devices and access their BARs or base address registers. Your kernel should have the ability to handle interrupts and install custom IRQ handlers. A very important feature your kernel should also have is a direct memory access or DMA memory allocator, meaning that you should be able to allocate uncacheable memory that can fit various alignment and page boundary requirements. If you already have a DMA allocator, you probably also have this, but your kernel should support page mapping and setting page attributes, such as marking pages as uncacheable. And finally, the series will require the use of sleep functions, or some sort of timeout mechanisms, to induce micro or millisecond delays. Here you can see a brief roadmap overview that the series will try to follow, starting from simply mapping and resetting the controller, all the way to having functional USB keyboard and mouse drivers that would also work with real hardware devices on bare metal. Now, before going over some environment setup steps, I would like to first show you a demo of the final result the series aims to achieve so you know what to expect or look forward to. And now that you've all been inspired and motivated to start writing your own XHCI driver, I want to go over a few environment setup steps. I will personally be using C++ to write the driver, as that is what my kernel is written in, but the concepts and procedures explained should be able to be easily ported to other languages such as C or Rust, whichever one you're writing your kernel in or feel more comfortable with. As for testing and virtualization, I will be using QMU, but the eventual goal is to obviously make it work on real hardware as well. Feel free to follow along using your own kernels and your own naming conventions, but for those that want to practice and follow along using the same code base as me, here are the steps to setting it up. First, go to this GitHub repo I created for this series, link will be in the description, and clone the setup0 branch. This branch will already contain enough infrastructure and features implemented in order to start writing the driver. This repository is essentially just a fork of the pre-XHCI state of my kernel, StellixOS, that I have been working on for the last year and a half. The build and setup instructions are identical for both of these repos, so I encourage you all to go check out the main Stellix repo, and maybe leave a star if you like the project. After cloning the repo, there is a make target called install dependencies, which should take care of installing any necessary system packages using your distro's package manager. These would include QMU, GCC, any other build tools, etc. Now to compile the project, simply run make image in the root project directory. This will recursively look for all source C++ and assembly files in the kernel subdirectory. Additionally, Stellix currently has a user land set of applications that are also compiled and built into an initRD, and this make image call takes care of that as well. Do keep in mind though, that if you're using this version of Stellix as a basis, if you modify the kernel source, you have to run make clean and rebuild the image to recompile both the kernel and user land, because due to some exploratory features that I'm working on in Stellix right now, 
Some user line code relies on certain kernel offsets that are produced in the ELF file, and if those offsets change, user line code might break. This won't affect the driver that we'll be writing, but some user line applications might just throw some page faults which would just clutter the output and not look very pretty. So just keep that in mind. Now once you've built the OS image, all you have to do to run it is call make run. This will open up a QMU window that will contain any graphics output and terminal instance that you ran it from should display any serial output printed from the kernel. This is what we will be relying on for our driver output through print devs. Now let's go over the project structure a little bit. I want to first point your attention to the make file. If you're using QMU, you must specify this line in order to enable XHCI controller emulation, otherwise it won't appear in your PCI device list. I also enabled emulation of two sample USB 2 devices, a QMU keyboard and a mouse. You can also enable QMU XHCI specific traces to be logged to a file with this line right here. We will definitely go over this in a later video when we will be watching the controller start and receive events. As for the code, we have this kernel directory here that's divided into an include and source subdirectories. Each of them contain additional subdirectories for different kernel subsystems. Feel free to look around them yourself, but the files we'll be working with and care about are under the drivers slash USB slash XHCI path. Here I already have XHCI.h and XHCI.cpp files created, and the only thing they contain is just the skeleton subclass of my kernel's PCI device driver base class. PCI device driver class simply provides an interface to attach and store a PCI device instance, read and register its interrupt line, and just expose some hooks that our child class can override. And in our CPP file, we just have a couple serial print devs here, just to test the pulse and see that the driver is registered and working, which we could see from our earlier output when we first ran the project. Now that we have a starting point for our driver that compiles and runs, we can start working on the fun stuff, and what the next tutorial will be focused on is mapping the controller into our kernel and accessing its internal registers to retrieve various hardware information. I hope you all enjoy this series, and if you have any questions or feedback, please do leave a comment below. That's it for today. I hope to see you in the next part.